So today I'm going to be making a rimmed basket like you see here. Um, has this nice wide rim. Um, I call this a bowl holder. Because you can set a glass bowl down inside. Um, use as a serving dish. So for the rimmed basket, <clears throat> or rimmed, rimmed bowl holder, I always start with a small circle. Um, and I always form my circle before I start sewing. Um, and I usually go around about three times. Okay. Two or three times. So that you have a small circle like this. So to start off, I just start with a straight stitch across um, this rolled coil that I have made. I already have my presser foot down, so let's start with a straight stitch. And then I reverse it. Okay, if I don't come back all the way straight. Um, and then back to the center. And I will move my camera a bit and put the needle down. Okay, so I can manipulate this center. So I raise my presser foot a bit, try to find the beginning of this and then put it on zigzag, just my um, width to four, and my length to 1.5, just to start out. And, whoops, sorry, I should have done that before I put my presser foot down, but I don't think it'd make a difference at this point. And I lift and turn a bit. Sometimes you can only go a couple stitches or you have to readjust your center core and then keep readjusting. A bit more. You've already secured your circle with that straight stitch, so you don't need to worry about it coming apart. I'm just trying to capture both sides of the coil before I um, uh, sew. Now I'm right now. I'm just undoing that um, coil. The loose part so I can get a so it doesn't just keep getting bigger and bigger because you don't want all that um, coil in the way so put my presser foot back down and continue sewing on the coil now as it gets a little larger here you can start manipulating it on the curve I'm gonna have to keep it um, lifting and lowering your presser foot. And okay. At this point, I think I'm gonna get rid of the extra threads that I have here. Most of them anyway. So, so they're out of my way and I don't sew them into the coil. And so then I continue zigzag. 
trying to keep both coils going in the correct direction. Okay, I think I'm doing, going pretty good. So at this point, I just readjust my length to two. Um, I just wanted to secure that center pretty well. And I normally do either a four or a three width, or maybe 3.5, um, which I think that's what I'm gonna do. For the bolt, I do a little tighter um, width because um, I need the extra strength because I'm gonna turn it inside out. So you're gonna abuse your bowl a bit. But I normally don't like to do it um, my um, zigzag very wide because I like to see the fabric and sometimes the Thread can cover up your fabric a lot if you do it. I know that most people recommend a five, the maximum width you can get. I, want, I think once you get um, pretty good th at this and know how um, your sewing machine reacts, that you can do a smaller width. And yes, sometimes I have to go back over a section that I've missed, but not a whole lot. I use an open-toed um, applique foot so I can see both sides of the coil. Like I'm paying attention. Um, uh, make sure that both of them are captured the way that I want. So I'm going to just um, sew this until I get to the size of the bottom of the bowl I need. Okay, the bottom of my bowl is about um, three and a half inches. So I've made the, um, the bottom of the bowl that I'm trying to fit this in is about three and a half inches. So I made the coil um, four inches. And at this point, I'm gonna start to do a lift. Now I don't wanna go all the way up to the head of my machine. Um, I do a probably, let's see, about a 45 degree angle just to start. Um, because of the, you have to sort of adjust your bowl, your um, your fabric bowl to the bowl that you're trying to fit it to. And the slopes on the bowl that I have, um, let me move this a bit, as you can see is, you don't have quite a shallow slope here. Um, I don't know how well you can see that with this, but if you look at the edges, it's quite a shallow slope. So I'm going to try about a um, 45 degree angle. Let's get started here. And again, I've um, readjusted my width to four. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to need a little wider width here. And the length is two. for me to see. There we go. I'm letting the feed dogs do most of the work. Um, my finger is just guiding it at this point. And I'll probably keep it at this 
45 degree angle for a few inches. I need to pull out some of more my coil. I broke. And along the way, I will stop and sort of fit the coil to the bowl, to the coil bowl, to the glass bowl, to make sure I'm keeping it at the right angle. So I'm going to um, sew a bit more and I'll be back with you in, in a, just a second. Okay, now I'm going to fit my coil, uh, coil bowl. bowl to the glass bowl. So you can see I've got a bit of a rise here. Probably done about one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is going okay, that the, the angle is correct. It looks like it's sitting pretty good so far. Um, so I've got a ways to go yet on the bowl. So I'll keep sewing till I get to the height that I want. Okay, I've done another six rows and I'm um, testing the shape again to make sure I'm still um, at a good angle. Um, and as you can see, there is a little, little tiny uh, gap beginning to form. So that indicates that I'm going to have to increase the angle, um, probably go to a more to a 60 degree because I'm getting, oh, I probably have another six rows before I get to the, to the rim of the bowl. So I just need to increase the angle a bit. Um, so I'm going to do that and um, get back to you when I got to the rim. This is what happens when you forget to put your presser foot down. I always, it never fails. Any project I'm working on, I forget to put the press foot down at one point. So I get this little nest of fab um, thread build up underneath. And my sometimes my machine locks up. So um, I will f cut all this away and start again. Now the bowl is at the height that I need. And how I got to this point with the the solid color and ready to start the variegated um, fabric again. I'll never know because I always, these I usually wrap beforehand and I'm just guessing when I um, start a new color at this and I sort of, I don't know how I guessed right on this one. And anyhow, um, getting close to the end here and because I'm going to um, uh, turn the bowl inside out, I'm going to put some extra stitches in here where I stop just to give some reinforcement. So I'm going to change the stitch length down to seven. And just do a few extra stitches just to give it some reinforcement. And I'll go back. And then lock the stitch off. And I'm ready to um, turn the bowl inside out. Now I'm ready to uh, turn the bowl inside out. As you can see what the outside, oops, forgive the mess of thread I have to cut off. Um, see what it looks like. And if you put the bowl in there, it should fit nicely. Sits on the bottom, so I don't have any gap there. Um, I'm kind of happy with the way this one turned out. Uh, um, so I'm ready to turn the um, coiled bowl inside out. So you just need to put a little brute force into that. And what I'm doing is I'm forming a, what I call my dog dish shape. Because I still need, uh, well, turn it inside out first. Then form the dog dish shape. 
because um, I need to clear the head of the machine while I'm sewing the um, brim. So I'll turn it over now and then depress this so I can, and I'll still have to put some pressure on this because it's still not gonna fit exactly. Well, this is pretty good, but once my machine starts going, it gets a little rough, but I think we're good. And like I said, this is my, I say a dog dish shape. You know how dog dishes are shaped. So I'm ready to start forming. So you see that now I can um, actually sew on a, trying to get a flat surface here. So, cause I'm not trying to build up anymore. I'm trying to build out. That's why we have to turn it inside out. This first um, row of the rim tends to be the most difficult to form. So I usually do one row of flat before I put on the handles because trying to form the um, um, bowl and and do handles at the same time, form, form the rim and do the handle at the same time is a little difficult. So I'm going to start with the um, same um, kind of stitch that I left off with just because I just want to make sure this is secure so I have width set on 4, length set on 0.7. So I'll do a few stitches that way, make sure my presser foot's down, which is my normal problem I have. So let's just do a few stitches here. some back up okay and let's change my length back to two and I'm ready to go forward so trying to keep the um, both coils underneath the machine I'm going much slower than I normally do just because it's a little hard to form this first row. Um, and as you, and I'm going around, I sort of press the um, bowl, um, the last row that I did down so I can get it flat. Um, coil here and I'm also working around the camera so it's trying to do things I normally don't do when I'm doing these bowls bit okay just nudging it to the center again so I can get a good hold there and flattening it the bowl itself trying to keep it centered that if I don't, if I miss, I can always go back and sew that area again. I'm glad that I'm changing colors at this point because it's sometimes a little hard to see where I'm going, what I'm doing. This gives me some reference point of the old, the previous rope and the new rope. Okay, let's keep that more centered. Flatten it 
out some more. Pressing down on the bowl sides. Getting close to the beginning again. Okay, I'm back at the beginning. You can see here where I started the, the flat row. So this is where I'm gonna start my handle. So again, I'm gonna shorten the stitch length to about 0.7. Just to give some extra reinforcement here because I'm changing the shape of the rope. Okay, so I'm going to take it off the machine so I can measure out where the handle should be. So I've plotted out my handles here. Um, first, I measured the diameter of the bowl, which was 28 inches. So, and the distance from here to where the handle starts again is three and a half inches. So that would be one and uh, three quarter inches um, as a center point. So then I measured 14 inches to the opposite side and then measured off three and a half inches here and set the um, handles. The handles are five inches long. So you've got three, three and a half inch gap and five inch long handles. Like I said, the, the bowl and all bowls will measure differently. So you just need to plot out your diameter, um, have that, so and um, make your handle distance, have that, and then measure from your half point to the other, your half diameter here, and then measure out your handles. Done. So I'm ready to start sewing again on this side. So we'll stick it under the machine and start again. So I'm starting right after where I have it pinned here. So I'm not gonna hit the pin, just to make sure I'm gonna advance it a teeny bit more, okay. Um, don't want to break my needle. And I use, if I get a gap there, I use my scissors to just push in the um, cording. I still have my um, width set at 4 and my length set at 0.7. So I am going to start this again and sew to where the next handle be begins. Um, as when I always stop and start, I take a few stitches forward and backward. Reset my stitch length to two. And continue sewing to the opposite side. At this point, because I have already flattened out that first row, it is a bit easier, although I'm still having to do some adjustment, um, making sure that 
everything is in the right place. Okay, coming up on the handle, I notice I popped my um, second handle off. I can fix that once I get this fixed here. Stitch length down to 0.7. I can't go too far because I'm almost at. I'm going to back up. Now, because I popped my um, handle where the handle begins again out, I'm going to have to go ahead and remeasure. I've reattached the um, end point of my handle on the opposite side, and I'm ready to begin again. Um, just starting off with some, some reinforced stitches here. Back up a bit. Ready to adjust my stitch length back to two. And we're off. When you're um, doing handles, sometimes you have to do some fancy, um, pull it out, yeah, fancy um, movement with the um, cording so you can keep it. So I'm trying to keep this going straight while I'm sort of tugging a bit on the bowl. And then we're going back towards the bowl. And I'm ready to take up the round three. last pin so I don't run over it. Snip off some thread so I don't sew over that. And keep that handle in the center there. It said
Okay, we're coming back to the beginning. So I'm gonna take some extra stitches here until I figure out what I'm going to do with um, the beginning of the rope. Sometimes I just, um, at this point, I'll um, I would sometimes I'll just um, fold this into, but I think I'm probably going to make a medallion again on this one. Um, so I'm going to have to sort of end off here. And then redo the bowl. So just a second and we'll flip the bowl out. 